Psycho, the classic American thriller released in 1960, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, is known for what exactly? The suspense? The black and white rather than color film? The iconic shower scene? Well, the answer is simple. Yes. But when looking further into the film, one might discover it's much more than just dramatic close-ups of screaming women accompanied by spooky music. In fact, if it weren't for Psycho, we might not have the modern slasher franchises we know and love today. What's that? With one film, Hitchcock was able to revolutionize the horror genre. Today I'll break down only one of his iconic Psycho scenes, and you'll understand why the movie is considered a classic. Before entering, Marion looks around the room, studying the stuffed birds as shown in her point of view shots, highlighting the significance of the predators, and perhaps hinting that Marion is the prey. Thank you. He orders Marion to sit down, and she does so obediently, once again enforcing his authority and dominance. I'm not hungry, go ahead. As she sits and begins her meal, we see Norman looking at Marion, even when she's not looking at him, perhaps studying her out of lust as he watches her with a sinister smile. In this shot, Norman is presented in a low-angle medium shot. This makes him appear taller, thus signifying his dominance. We, as an audience, are forced to look up at him, which gives him more control. The only light source in the shot comes from a lamp to the right of Marion, illuminating her face well, as opposed to Norman's face, half cast in shadow. Because the only source of light comes from a lamp, the shot is framed in half-light, half-darkness. Norman's position in the darker side of the room represents his split personality and mysterious demeanor. Right away, the lighting and color of clothing help us to understand the character's frame of mind. Marion is wearing lighter clothing, and her face is well lit by the nearby lamp. This depicts innocence and lightheartedness, while Norman is a complete opposite. He wears dark clothing, and half of his face is painted in shadow. The shadow shows two different sides to him, or perhaps reveals the other side of him which we hadn't seen before. Another relevant detail is that Norman's shirt is tucked rather neatly. Neatness is often the characteristic of obsessive-compulsive disorder, and obsessive personality is a key characteristic of a serial killer. Ironically, though, the top button of his shirt is unbuttoned, which shows the divide in his personality. In the two-shot scene with Marion and Norman, the audience is positioned closer to Marion and further away from Norman. This allows the audience to identify more with Marion. The distance between the two is prominent, but we can see Norman leaning in towards Marion with his gaze fixed on her. In the next low-angle medium shot of Norman, he looks nervous. This whole conversation makes the audience a little anxious. It's unusual how Norman speaks with Marion as if he feels nervous around women. This feeling of threat is also implemented by the stuffed owl on the left side of the shot. The owl's wings are spread as if it were swooping down on its unsuspecting prey. This is similar to the way that Norman is luring Marion in before the kill. Seen in the shot also are two pictures of exposed women, one trying to cover up and the other appeared as a victim of attacking men. This is very discreet foreshadowing for how Marion will be vulnerably exposed, then attacked. We can see Norman aggravated from Marion's rather casual suggestion to put his mother in an institution. We get a close-up shot of Norman's face to further showcase his anger. He leans closer to Marion and his face is cold, stern, and threatening. The shots change from close-up to extreme close-up, causing the audience to feel anxious as we are unsure of how Norman will react. We can tell by Marion's expression how she feels isolated and uncomfortable in this situation. We get a medium close-up shot showing her apprehension. The feeling of menace arises again as more sharp, high-pitched music plays, yet it's slow, adding more suspense. Norman finally leans back, admitting he had a similar idea, which puts us at ease for a second. That ease, however, is short-lived when he leans forward again and defends his mother with... It's not as if she were a, a maniac, a raving thing. She just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? Diegetic, non-diegetic music amplifies as the scene progresses, providing more suspense and tension. As Norman gets angrier, the music becomes more sinister, implying that Norman is a serious threat. We also see the fright on Marion's face, which unsettles the audience. Norman leans back after his rant, providing the audience with a sense of calm relief. 
After the conversation, Marion stands with a low angle shot towards her and a high angle shot towards Norman, shifting their dynamic and giving Marion more control. She walks out of the room, declaring her need for a shower, unsuspecting of the events that follow. Now that you have more context, allow me to further analyze some details of the scene and its characters, specifically Norman. We discover later in the film that Norman suffers from some kind of split or a multiple personality disorder. Signs supporting this discovery can, however, be seen here. Norman often contradicts himself. Earlier in the film, he tells Marion she'd be doing him a favor by having dinner with him, and he'd let her know when the food was ready for the both of them. But by the time it's prepared, he tells her he's not hungry and it's all for her. When she begins her meal, he tells her she eats like a bird, implying that she eats smaller in portions. Then he laughs, admitting that birds, in reality, eat a lot. He later talks about his love for taxidermy, how it's a great hobby for him. When Marion tells him, every man needs a hobby, he corrects her by saying, it's more than just a hobby. This further supports the idea of him having a split personality disorder, as his opinions are often unreliable and changing. After defending his mother, Norman confesses that he doesn't hate her, rather, he hates what she's become. I understand. I don't hate her. I hate what she's become. I hate the illness. Obviously, we discover towards the end of the film that his mother is dead, and he often likes to dress up in her clothing while murdering innocent people, kind of role-playing as her. So it's clear in this scene he's truly confessing his hatred for himself and his own illness, referring to split personality disorder. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this brief analysis of the classic horror film Psycho. Be sure to watch the movie for yourself if you haven't so you can analyze for yourself and further appreciate the masterpiece.